Hey friends, today we're going to tell a story of how a rogue lightning strike hit our DIY off-grid solar power system, cost us thousands of dollars, left us without power for a week, and what we're going to do to make sure it doesn't happen again. Hey, this is Jonathan from Tiny Shiny Home. My family and I are building an off-grid desert homestead from the ground up so you can learn when we do stuff right and in case of this video, when we do stuff wrong. Two years ago, we installed a large, fully off-grid solar system for our homestead, all DIY, pieced together ourselves. It's got 7,200 watts of solar panels, a 28 kilowatt hour lithium battery bank, and a 5,000 watt AC inverter. The video explaining the system has racked up over a half a million views, and we know there are many using it as a guide to build their own system. Now, when we installed the system, we did put in lightning protection. The solar ground mount from Iron Ridge was grounded by design, and our combiner boxes also had lightning suppression built in to shunt to the ground. However, last summer was a historically strong monsoon season. We had some epic storms, and there was a rogue indirect lightning strike that hit somewhere near our system, took out our Victron inverter, our charge controller, even our our BMS display. This cost us thousands of dollars to replace. It left us without power for a week. It sucked. Real bad. It also led us on a months long journey researching additional lightning protection, desert soil conditions, warranties, and even insurance. Now that we've got some distance, perspective, and some new gear, I'm going to walk you through the steps we're taking to make sure that hopefully this doesn't happen again because monsoons are coming. It's that time of year and we got to get ready. So you're probably wondering, how did this even happen? Well, I think the main thing that we missed during our whole setup and researching phase was the erratic way that lightning can move during a strike. I'm from Tennessee, from the East Coast, where most of the time when lightning hits, it hits a tree or like a tall metal building. And so that was how we designed our system. It was like, we were worried about this large metal solar panel ground mount. We figured that would be the target. And so we wanted to protect anything that might hit that metal frame and might try to go into the charge controllers inside of our solar shed building. But it turns out when you have huge wide open spaces with massive monsoon storms, indirect lightning strikes are the things you really got to watch out for. So if lightning hits the ground near your install and energizes your wire, it could go either direction, especially with wire runs about 100 foot long. In our case, we were protecting the solar panel array, but our charge controllers inside the solar shed were not protected. Even worse, our AC power lines didn't have any protection on either end. Now look, there are a lot of internet opinions on lightning and grounding, especially in a fully off-grid system. There are tons of products out there you can find on Amazon that say they are for lightning suppression or lightning protection, but a lot of them don't really do anything. All that to say, after a lot of our own research, we've decided to put Midnight Solar's SPDs into our system. I'm gonna explain why. Most fuses and breakers are built for high draws in the system, not for huge, fast influxes of voltage like you'd see with a lightning strike. So while we have plenty of fuses and breakers protecting our system, internally, a lightning strike just moves too fast for those to react. The Midnight Solar SPDs are built to clamp down immediately when high voltage or amperage is detected, protecting whatever device is closest to it and shunting the surge to the ground. If you do have a lightning strike and that SPD has clamped and shunted the power to the ground, it is a one-use scenario. It has done its job. It has protected your expensive gear. You're going to have to get a new one. Now, they do have a five-year warranty on these, but either way, they're only like a hundred bucks. And I feel like spending a hundred bucks to protect a three, four, five thousand dollar inverter is totally worth it. All right, so we're putting SPDs in. Let's take a look at how we're installing these in our system for our specific setup. Let's start with the DC side. Like we already mentioned, we had lightning suppression breakers in the combiner boxes at our solar panel array. We had so many panels, we had to do two combiner boxes and two solar charge controllers. Because the wire going into the solar shed was close to 100 feet, we needed to add a DC SPD device to each charge controller. These are pretty easy to connect. You run the positive wire of the SPD to the positive PV connection of the charge controller and the negative wire of the SPD to the negative PV connection on the charge controller. The ground wire on the SPD will connect to your earth ground. Now on our system, because we have a Victron Quattro inverter, there's a single 
grounding lug on that inverter that all the grounds of everything connects to and it goes to a physical grounding rod outside the building. We're going to talk more about grounding rods in a minute, but that is how you connect the SPD on the DC side. When connected properly, you're going to see both blue LED lights for both the positive and the negative side. My only complaint with these SPDs so far is that they're just really large and awkward to install. The, the diameter of these things is really big. And you can see we put like a standard electrical box we tried to mount it into, but it was still so deep that we had to hang it over the edge of our backer board because it wouldn't have fit the other way. That size got even more complicated when we moved to the AC side of the system and tried to install one of these on our Quattro inverter. A lot of other inverters on the market they're just you know big boxes they got holes you can punch out you can install things into the quattro is not like that so we actually had to install it upside down using a compression clamp a little macgyvery but it worked the midnight solar ac spds are a little different instead of a positive and negative like you had on the dc ones this is actually two hot lines and a ground for our victron quattro inverter it's 120 volts so it only has one leg but what we did is we decided to take one hot leg to the AC out and then one hot leg to the generator in. So that way, if we have our generator on going through the Quattro charging the batteries, we can also protect if lightning were to hit when we're running the generator outside. But as far as ground goes, that works the same way. You're going to connect that to your earth ground, which is going to go out to your ground rod. Now, because of this setup on the inverter, we usually only see one blue LED light because we run off solar 99% of the time. We hardly ever get that generator out. If the generator was running, Running, then we would see both blue LEDs, but most of the time we just see the AC side protected. So now we're protecting the solar panel array, our charge controllers, our inverter, what's left. Some might add another DC SPD near their battery bank coming from the inverter to the batteries just in case something went weird there. However, that's a very short run. It's not over 100 feet and we're already protecting the charge controllers and the inverter. So we decided not to go down that route. We might change our mind in the future, but that's what we're doing for now. One of our last big projects out here was to put a permanent cover over our Airstream. It's our tiny shiny home, so where we get our name. It's a vintage Airstream that we renovated to travel in full time with our kids. So we built this beautiful metal truss cover. That meant we covered up the solar panels on the top of the Airstream roof. So we wanted to run AC power up there so we could keep the batteries charged. The AC power from the inverter up to the trailer cover was definitely over 100 feet. So we needed to put an AC SPD on the electrical box up at the trailer. Now I actually haven't done this yet, so I'm gonna take you along as we install this in real time. Let's do it. We've got our big solar panel array there. Power goes into the solar shed where it's got our inverter and our batteries and all that. And then we are trenched and running out of the solar shed all the way underground up to there's a little electrical box back behind there you can see if the lightning were to hit anywhere in between these two areas it could go to the solar shed where it is protected or it could go this way where it's not and so i'm gonna put one 300 ac spd in but before we do that we gotta go turn off the power to the airstream we'll go way too much stuff over here hold on So it's a little cramped back here, but I'm gonna take this faceplate off and put my multimeter on it and just double check that there's no power at the source. Okay, we're good. Now remember when I was talking about how these are hard to install, same rule applies here. It's so thick that it won't fit underneath here. It's just gonna hit the back wall. So I'm gonna need to go in the side. I don't wanna go on this side though, because then it's gonna stick out here and there's some cords and stuff over here that might run into them. So I think I'm gonna install it here on this side. Looks like I need to be down below. And the reason is I don't wanna be anywhere near these boxes when I drill into this. And I've got one of these bits here. So I'm just gonna pop a hole and then we will throw it in there. Oh, still not big enough. These come with a thread on them already and then a gasket and a nut. And so these are rated for outdoor by default. I actually have two of these rubber gaskets. So I'm gonna put one to go on the outside and we'll push all these wires through. Gasket and the locking nut on the inside. And 
Installing one of these in a box like this is gonna be a little different than the inverter. You always connect the ground to your grounding lug, so that's gonna go here. But then one of my positives, I'm gonna run into the positive line coming from the solar shed. And then this other black line, I'm just gonna cap off because I don't need to use. Power back on. And when we go up there, we should see a blue light on one blue light on the AC SPD. There it is. And then that one is not. So we'll plug everything back in, get the cover on, and we'll be done. All right, the Midnight Solar SPDs are installed. What else can we do to protect the system? Well, we talked about grounding earlier. And so here's another thing that we learned as we dug deeper into the research about this area and our very sandy soil desert conditions. Grounding rods don't work that great. Many people have trouble even just doing regular electric fences because they put in a ground rod and there's just not enough moisture in the soil to transmit that current. So if we spend all this time putting in these lightning protection devices that are supposed to shunt the excess voltage to the ground, but we don't have a clear path to the ground, we're kind of defeating the whole purpose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add more grounding rods to our system, and that should give us a clearer path for that excess voltage to go during a lightning strike. We got two more eight foot grounding rods. We're gonna connect those with six gauge bare copper wire. Actually four gauge because that was all my hardware store had, but that is fine because it's bigger than we need. So I have to get back in here. I gotta dig this up and then we'll work on adding those other two. And obviously I have a lot of wires and conduit over here. So I'm gonna be digging very slowly and carefully to make sure that I don't damage anything. Okay, so I found it right here. So I'm just gonna trench out a pretty shallow trench straight down that full 12 feet so that this bare copper wire uh, is down underneath the ground and not too close to the surface. Good grief. Okay, those are in. I gotta go get some tools, wire cutters, connect this copper pipe, and we'll finish it up. All right, so the original is connected to this one. That's six feet. And then all the way down to this one, it's also six feet. Hopefully that'll be enough in our sandy soil conditions. Do you know that there are a group of people who support our channel every month? These are our tiny, shiny homies. You can see some of them are scrolling to either side of me. And we just wanted to take a minute and say, thank you, homies. We could not do this without you. So let's give them all a high five and let's get back to the video. So what about warranties and insurance? I know you're probably thinking this, we said we had to pay thousands of dollars out of pocket to replace that inverter, the charge controller, and the BMS display. Why didn't Victron cover that? Why didn't REC cover that? Well, the simple fact is, this is more of like an act of God situation that insurance would be involved with, which we'll get to insurance in a minute. There's not really any way that they could 
truly protect against all lightning strikes. I mean, we spent a lot of time talking to a lot of solar installed companies and, and they recommended these SPDs and all these other things. But even at the end of the day, they were like, a lightning strike could still take out the whole system. Like there's just only so much you can do when you have that much power coursing through the ground near your system. Now there are some bundles you can buy that have warranties built in for situations like this. And if you paid a solar installer to come out and do your whole system, they might have some kind of warranty for a situation like this as well. But if you're like us and you're DIYing this and you're taking parts from various vendors and you're piecing together your own system, you're probably going to be on your own. As you can imagine, after dumping all the cash into replacing these components, we started to think, okay, well, maybe we could get it insured so that if this happened again, we could get those pieces replaced. This is where we ran into some problems. So we live in Cochise County, Arizona. We're part of what's called the Owner Builder Opt-Out. This is a really cool program that lets people build alternatively. We love Earthbag. We see people doing earth ships, straw bale housing, geodesic domes. There's all kinds of cool stuff going on out here. But if you do this Owner Builder Opt-Out, you're opting out of inspections. This can be cheaper and simpler for your build but this does mean crucially that you don't get a certificate of occupancy when you finish your house so we reached out to a bunch of insurance companies we're like hey we have this earthbag building with an off-grid solar system in it can we insure it and they would get pretty far down the path but as soon as that certificate came up it kind of shut down all conversations because that is like a document they need to be able to do insurance for some reason now if you're going through a more traditional build process and you are getting inspections you will get that certificate you're probably going to have a more productive conversation with insurance agents than we did. Okay, what did we learn from this whole situation? Well, first we learned that we needed to update the wiring diagrams that I mentioned earlier. So if you've already bought those, you can log back in, you can re-download the new versions that now include the SPDs, the additional ground rods, all those are in those high-res illustrations. And of course, if you haven't gotten a copy of those diagrams, you can do that at the link below. We've also learned that DIY in your own solar system is hard. And just when you think you've researched every single last bit of it, a random storm can come and wreak havoc on your system and your wallet. So what are our recommendations? Well, more lightning protection, insurance if you can get it. If not, a healthy savings account, maybe a backup generator, maybe even extra pieces of gear lying around so you don't have downtime if one of them gets messed up. And I think most importantly, we've learned that this journey to being more self-sufficient and living more sustainably, it can be really humbling. We just have to suck it up, learn from our mistakes and keep moving forward because those storms are gonna keep coming and you can't let it stop you. Oh, and by the way, if you're looking at this huge off-grid solar system and you're thinking, I don't need anything that big. Well, you should check out this video. It's all about our mini VRM remotely controlled 12 volt systems that we use for our pump houses and our sheds. We'll see you next time.